In this exercise, we will match function and shape. We'll start with this shape, the graph of a rational function, and we will see which one of these four rational functions has produced this graph. So, looking at this graph, I can see a number of asymptotes. So, first of all, there is a vertical asymptote here, and it looks as if this might be at around negative 1, and there's another one here which might be at around 1, roughly, we might guess. It might be negative 2 or 2. We'll see a bit later which one it is. We can also see a horizontal asymptote, which is y equal to 0, because the graph of the function for x getting really large is actually approaching the x-axis. And the same for x getting really, really small. So for x going towards negative infinity, we are also approaching the x-axis. So y equal to 0 is the horizontal asymptote. What else can I see there? I can see a y-axis intercept up there, which is positive, and I can see one, two x-axis intercepts. So I'm not sure where exactly they are. If this was negative 1, then this might be negative 3. If this was 1, then this might be 2. Just some guesses. So let's now look at what kind of functions we've got. So first of all, we had these two vertical asymptotes. Let's say they were at negative 1 and at 1. And let's say this was actually 2 and this was actually negative 3. As it will turn out in a moment, these are actually the values we've got. So let's have a look at the first one. Now the first one has got vertical asymptotes x equal to 1, to negative 1, and to 0, because these are the values we are not allowed to put into this function, because we would be dividing by 0 if we did this. Now the graph only has two vertical asymptotes. This function shows 3, so that means it certainly can't be this one. We can exclude this immediately. Now let's look at the next one. We've got x minus 1 times x plus 1 in the denominator, and as, as it turns out, this would correspond to these two vertical asymptotes, so it could be okay. Now, look at the next one. We've got x minus 1 and x plus 1 squared. Looking at that, yeah, that could also be okay. And the last example is the same, so could be one of the three last examples here. Now, let's have a look at the intersections with the x-axis. So we've got negative 3 and 2, and of course we'll find those in the numerator. So look at number 2. x plus 3 means x equal to negative 3 is going to be the only x-axis intercept. x-axis intercept. Now, what we've got here in the graph is two x-axis intercepts. So that means we can exclude this now as well. Let's look at the other two. They both have 2 and negative 3 as x-axis intercepts, and as it turns out, that would be okay, so both would fit. What else could we look at? Now, we still have this uh, horizontal asymptote here, y equal to 0. That means that the degree of the numerator must have been smaller than the degree of the denominator, because that's when we have an, a horizontal asymptote equal to 0. So let's have a look at degrees. The numerator degree here is 2, and the denominator degree is 3. In the next example, the numerator degree is 2, and the denominator degree is also 2. So in this case, we can exclude the last example, because the degrees are both the same. And if that's the case, then we do have a horizontal asymptote, but it is not the x-axis. It is y equal to c, and c is not 0. So we can exclude this one, and that means that it would have had to be this one. So the function that produced this graph is the function number 3.